The Norwegian writer Justine Garder, in his best-selling philosophical novel Sophie's World, sketches an illuminating and humorous thought experiment. Imagine, he writes, that one morning, Mom, Dad, and little Thomas, aged two or three, are having breakfast in the kitchen. After a while, Mom gets up and goes over to the kitchen sink. Dad flies up and floats around under the ceiling while Thomas sits watching. What do you think Thomas says? Perhaps he points up at his father and says, Daddy's flying. Thomas will certainly be astonished, but then he very often is. Dad does many strange things that this business of a little flight over the breakfast table makes no difference to him. Every day, Dad shaves with a funny machine. Sometimes he climbs onto the roof and turns the TV aerial. Now it's Mom's turn. She hears what Thomas says and turns around abruptly. How do you think she reacts to the sight of Dad floating nonchalantly over the kitchen table? She drops the jam jar on the floor and screams with fright. The difference between these two reactions has to do with habit. Mom has learned that people cannot fly. Thomas has not. The downside to growing up is that we lose our sense of wonder. We expect the sun to rise and set each day. We expect seasons to change. We expect our complex bodies to perform their exquisitely balanced functions. None of this is new or exciting. It's just life. The Sfasemis makes a strikingly similar point, although without Gardner's entertaining thought experiment. He says, The reason we lose our sense of wonder as we grow older is because we forget how it felt the first time we experienced new and exciting phenomena. As we age and experience more of life, there is less to wonder about, more to forget, and so we become complacent, if not cynical. This state of mind is captured by the world-weary Ecclesiastes, who comes to the realization that there is nothing new under the sun. But imagine living a life of wonder. What if, despite growing older, we were able to maintain our youthful amazement? What if we didn't forget what it's like to see that first sunset? Sfasemis, by creatively reading the following verse, ascribes this perpetual state of wonder to Abraham. V'Avraham zakein babayamim, v'adunai berach et Avraham bakol. Abraham was old, advanced in years, and the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. Rather than read ba bayamim as advanced in years, Sfasemis reads it hyperliterally, ba. He came, bayamim, with his days. In other words, Abraham carried with him throughout his long life the memory of each new day he experienced. The childlike excitement he felt on discovering new phenomena remained etched in his memory. His life was one of constant renewal, or as Svasemis puts it in Hebrew, hitchadshut. A cardinal rule for Svasemis is lo tishkach, don't forget. Try to retain your initial sense of wonder for all things and assume a perpetual stance of gratitude for the gift of life. As for Ecclesiastes' pessimistic, pessimistic declaration that there's nothing new under the sun, Svasemis agrees, under the sun, things appear the same. But above the sun, there's constant renewal. What he means by this is that if one is only able to observe physical phenomena in their outermost manifestation. Nothing really changes, and there really isn't much to get excited about. But just beyond this reductionist perception, above the sun, so to speak, lies a more subtle truth, and that is that everything is in a constant state of flux and renewal. Being alive to this truth leads to a sense of wonder, awe, and gratitude.